thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. In any sport, greatness is difficult to define. Do you look at individual accolades or team achievements? What stats should you value? Does it matter who had the highest peak or is longevity more important? In climbing, the task is even harder. The sport spans so many different eras and includes so many different disciplines that trying to compare climbers against each other is almost impossible. In my opinion, the definition varies too much for there to be any one answer. We've seen too many amazing climbers for there to be a definitive GOAT. However, depending on how you frame it, I think you can pick out seven climbers from the long history of the sport who each have a convincing argument to be made as the greatest of all time. Some of them are specialists, others dabbled in all areas. The one thing they all have in common though is that they all have ascents and achievements to their name that no other climber alive at the time was able to pull off. They each have their own claim to being the greatest climber of all time and I'm going to lay them out for you one by one. So, without further ado, this is my presentation of the 7 best rock climbers in the history of the sport. This is Making the Case, and today, the greatest climber of all time is Tommy Caldwell. If you follow rock climbing at all, you've probably heard of Tommy Caldwell. One of the most famous climbers of all time, Caldwell has been a staple of the community for a couple of decades now. In that period, he's completed some of the hardest ascents in the world across almost every discipline of the sport, cementing his position as the greatest climber ever. To understand what makes Tommy the greatest, it's useful to take a quick look at the history of climbing, specifically in America. It's a bit of a generalization, but you can sort of break the sport down into two distinct eras, what I would call the Exploration Age and the Difficulty Age. The Exploration Age was all about pushing the limits of danger, long runouts, uncertain ascents, and risking your life to climb more and more outrageous routes. In the 80s, the sport began to transition. Suddenly, climbing wasn't about how scary or exposed your route was. The primary goal was instead to pull off the most difficult moves possible. Hanging on your rope, working the same sequence over and over, this was all acceptable in the name of doing the most individually challenging moves. Obviously the line here gets blurred, but for the most part, these two eras of climbing are relatively distinct from each other, as are the climbers. Ron Kalk, for example, was a giant of the exploration age who couldn't keep up in competitions or pure sport routes. What these eras did have in common though was the idea of impossibility. To me, that's what climbing has always been about, whether a route is impossibly difficult or impossibly dangerous. More than pure difficulty, the goal has always been to find something that seems to be beyond human limits and make it doable, and at this, no one in the history of climbing has ever done more than Tommy Caldwell. He's a bridge between the two eras, a completely unique hybrid of the different types of rock climbing. He combines the old world full of uncertain ascents, big falls, and a penchant for discovery with the new style of brutally hard moves, scientific attention to detail, and an almost absurd dedication to difficulty. To see why, to really understand just how impressive Caldwell's career has been, you need to start at the beginning. Before we do that though, we need to hear a quick word from today's sponsor, Squarespace. As someone who's built online businesses before, I can personally attest to how useful Squarespace's features are and how nice it is to be able to have control over building your website without needing to know how to code. Their entire thing is giving you the features you need to make your website as good as possible, like their social media toolkit or their behind the scenes analytics. If you want to give exclusive content to your biggest fans, there's literally no simpler way to do it than by using their members only features, which keeps them on your site. Whatever your project is, Squarespace has the tools to build it. Head to squarespace.com ascensionism for a free trial and 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. In the early days of his career, Caldwell was mostly a sport climber, making a name for himself in competitions and on hard, single-pitch routes. 
Even though he's often self-depreciating about his own strengths and abilities, he put up some insanely difficult ascents, like Kryptonite 514C slash D and Flex Luther 515A slash B, both of which were absolutely cutting edge for their time. In his late teens though, Tommy was drawn away from single pitch routes and towards the big walls of Yosemite Valley. Now, it's important to acknowledge here that part of the reason he did this was because he felt that he couldn't keep up with other sport climbers, namely Chris Sharma, in terms of sheer difficulty. Now, this probably seems weird. If you couldn't climb as hard as Chris Sharma, how can Caldwell be considered the greatest of all time? To me, it boils down to what I talked about earlier. Climbing isn't just about sheer difficulty, and there's more to the sport than single pitch bolted routes. At its core, climbing has always been about pushing the limits of what's possible, and when he transitioned to the big walls of Yosemite, Caldwell began pushing those limits farther than anyone else ever has. To see why, you need to understand the unique challenges that climbing in the valley presents. In the 2000s, progress in Yosemite had somewhat stalled. To the old school climbers, many of the blank sections of El Capitan were simply too difficult to even think about free climbing. To younger climbers who were more used to sheer difficulty, the old valley ethic and unfathomable size of El Capitan was too much for them to push their limits on these massive cliffs. As a sport specialist whose dad had also taken him on big wall and alpine climbs, Caldwell bridged the gap between these two eras perfectly. In his early 20s, he turned his attention towards El Cap, where he kicked off one of the most impressive stretches of climbing the world has ever seen. There was the nose, the nose free in a day, free ascents of the Muir Wall, the Zodiac, the Salafe, and El Corazon, the first free ascents of the West Buttress, the Dihedral Wall, Magic Mushrooms, and the Yosemite Triple Crown, the No Speed Record, the Don West Bay Route, Lurking Fear, routes that people once thought were impossible, Caldwell was knocking down in an insane way. Now, this is where the legend of Tommy Caldwell began to grow and where he started to distinguish himself from other climbers we've seen before. We've seen climbers who would start from the ground up with no idea of what they were getting into and force their way up these massive routes. We've seen climbers who can onsite 513 and 514, but we've never seen someone combine those two disciplines in the way that Caldwell did. He was like a member of the Stone Masters if that member had spent 15 years locked in a garage training with Ben Moon. It was like nothing the climbing world had ever seen, but he was just getting started. In 2008, Tommy Caldwell would begin the project that would turn him into one of the best known climbers of all time, the Dawn Wall. Now, remember when I said that climbing is about pushing impossibility? This route pushed the definition of impossible to new heights. Reflecting back on the first season he spent on it, Caldwell said, I could barely do the individual moves in some places. I realized that I would never be good enough to do it. Even once the route became a little clearer and some of the sequences got linked, look at what Chris Sharma, consensus strongest climber in the world, had to say. It felt kind of impossible. Wow. Ow! <laughs> That's crazy. And I kind of wrote it off as something that might just be for the future generations. Basically, the Dawn Wall was impossible. It was written off by almost everyone, but Tommy kept plugging away at it. It's important to understand the sheer work that went into this early part of the project beyond just climbing. 12 hour days spent swinging back and forth across the wall, trying to piece together any sequence in this massive ocean of rock. This is what Caldwell has that no other climber has ever had. The big wall experience to find this absurd path through the maze, which included scary run out cracks above 40 year old pins, delicate featureless slab, and free climbing up to 9A, with the strength and sport climbing skills to actually make everything go. Finally, after seven years of work, it all came together and Tommy Caldwell ticked one of the most impressive climbs we've ever seen. In between projecting the Dawn Wall, he found time to push limits in other areas. The first 513 on Colorado's The Diamond, big multi-pitch linkups in Morocco, the first ascent of the Fitzroy Traverse with Alex Honnold, and 
Let's not forget, he was still one of the first people to ever send 515. This is what, to me, makes Tommy Caldwell the greatest climber of all time. His resume spans almost every area of rock climbing. Bouldering competition victories, cutting edge sport climbs, historic alpine routes, insane speed link ups, and what could likely be considered the hardest route in the world. In fact, I would go out on a limb and say there's never been another climber, past or present, who could have pulled off the things that Caldwell has done, especially the Dawn Wall. Sharma couldn't have done it. Lynn Hill couldn't have done it. Adam Andro, with all his strength and technique, doesn't have the knowledge to piece together this puzzle. Only Caldwell, with his weird mixture of sport climbing strength and Yosemite big wall knowledge, was able to solve the greatest remaining mystery in climbing. When you combine this with everything else he's done, the nose, the triple crown, Flex Luther and Fitzroy and Magic Mushroom 514, you get the picture of his career. A complete rock climber, the perfect hybrid of the old school ethic and new school strength, something we've never seen before and might never see again, and that's what makes him the greatest climber of all time.